Morning everybody, Clay Herter with ATX Precision here at Sportsman's Finest down in BKs during our sixth week of quarantine, trying to make use of our time. Uh, my intention today is to further go, further delve into ballistic apps. Specifically, we're going to look at ballistic arc so that we can arm you with as much knowledge as possible as you're getting into the precision rifle world. All right, so let's get started. All right, just like our other video regarding applied ballistics, a lot of these data inputs are the same. Uh, one of the reasons I like this, this app, again, is very intuitive interface and very intuitive outputs, and, and we'll look at some of those. So, so jumping right in, uh, just like applied ballistics, this one you start off with a rifle profile, but where this deviates uh, and goes its own path, this time you set up the rifle profile with the ammo in it. Okay, so let's just jump right into this one I've got checked up at the top. Uh, again, sticking with 6.5 shooting ELDM. All right, again, you'll go through, you pick, you pick your bullet uh, from the library. In this case, I picked uh, the .264, 140 grain. Uh, I'm using the G7 ballistic coefficient, uh, ICAO metrics, all right, ballistic coefficient. Uh, you can always expand those out, take a look at them, see what, what you're looking at, make sure they're, they're, they're correct. You know, every once in a while, some of these bullet libraries, you do need to refine them just a little bit. So don't, don't be afraid to, to double check some of those input parameters. Okay, especially length. A lot of times length may be shorter or less than what's, what's reported inside the app. So, so go ahead and update that if you need to. All right, just like before, side height is absolutely critical. In this case, we measured it for this rifle, 1.95. All right, we zeroed it at 100. Just like in our previous video where we talked about elevation offset and windage offset, you can set this up for different different loads. In this case, this is my primary load, unsuppressed. So its elevation offset is zero, and its windage offset is zero. What that means, hey, when I zero this thing at 100 yards, where I'm aiming is exactly where it's going, okay? Again, you put in your barrel twist, your muzzle velocity. You know, you can tell it what units your optics are in down there. Uh, one of the nice features about geoballistics, you can set up some overlays or some thresholds. Uh, you can set up a vital size. Let's say you're hunting um, smaller game. You want to know how much it matters. When do I need to start changing my, my uh, 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 elevation or making an adjustment? So let's just say we've got a 6-inch vital size. That's fairly common. Energy threshold, you know, I... I I'm a hunter, so 1,000 foot-pounds is a, a generally recognized uh, uh, benchmark. Velocity threshold, you know, may or may not be useful. I'm going to turn that guy off. Um, you know, a lot of times you can put in where it hits the sound barrier. Uh, but again, you know, that's more of a target, target uh, option for target shooters. All right, your muzzle velocity correction, just like we trued up the other app. This one allows you to true here. It's just it's on the rifle profile page. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Okay, so we're done. We'll hit save. We've got that rifle checked. You can go through and pick out which rifle you're on. This, this app stays on the rifle profile you pick until you change it so it doesn't, it doesn't rotate off of it. Okay, your next screen down there lower left, you'll hit the weather profile. Pretty pretty standard inputs. You tell it the wind speed, you tell it the direction, tell it your atmospheres, you know. In this case, you have the choice. You can either enter in pressure, temperature, humidity yourself, or if you've got a device such as a Kestrel that gives you density altitude directly, density altitude just to review, that is how thick is that air your bullet's traveling through. Obviously, thicker air where it's got more drag on it is going to change what your firing solution is, okay? So if you've got if you've got a Kestrel that gives you density altitude, hey, you only have to enter one one parameter. Uh, for myself, I'm carrying a GPS. I've typically got a compass in the field to give me in, incline or bearing. Uh, I've, I've usually got some form of, of temperature device, and of course I've got my laser rangefinder. So I'm already carrying a lot of this stuff anyway. That's why I don't have the Kestrel as well. Okay. You can Bluetooth it between different. Uh, Devices, like we said in our first video on the overview, you can Bluetooth it between a Kestrel, you can Bluetooth it between a weather flow, or you can come down here and tell it to load up from a certain station. I've got our, our 
our location service is off for the purpose of this video, but it'll pull up the closest weather stations if it can get a, a feed or if it can get a, a signal. Uh, be careful with this. A lot of times this is what gets people into trouble, especially if you're out in the, out in the field away from, from civilization. You know, it may search for a long time, uh, draining your battery un, unknown to you, or it may find a weather station that may not be very close to you, but because it's the closest one, it may pull that weather down. You know, just, just be careful. Even when we're on our range up at Rugby Peak Ranch uh, or some of our other ranges that we use, when this thing pulls down a weather station, the closest one is just about 15 miles away. And a lot of times it's very different up there. Okay, so, so use that feature at your own risk. Okay. Now, one of the things I'll say on direction, okay, for the wind, uh, and this, this goes for, for both of the apps that we talk about, you know, a lot of times we used to teach wind uh, comes from a clock direction. Hey, the angle I'm shooting to my target, that's, that's 12 o'clock. Right, an angle right to left, 3 o'clock. Angle left to right, that's a 9 o'clock. Tailwind is a 6 o'clock, and then you can kind of break it down from there. One of the things we've evolved over the years on teaching, we found, myself and our other instructors, a lot of times we'll go out to the training sites, do a single cold bore shot on a far off target. Our first round hit percentages went drastically up as soon as we started using an actual compass bearing for that wind rather than going with the clock method. Okay, it breaks it down a little bit more precise. We've got a lot of terrain up there, ridge lines and canyons. Uh, that little degree of, of extra effort proved to be a big jump in our first round hit uh, percentage. So I recommend that. Uh, with, with this one, very intuitive. It's simply the compass direction. You know, if you've got wind coming out of 270, you put that in. You know, and that's you just measure that straight with your compass. Okay. On your next screen, this is what it. I've got it set up to default into chart mode. On your next screen, that's where you tell it what direction you're shooting. That's shot, shot bearing. Okay. So let's say we're shooting at. I'm gonna say we're shooting at. 150 degrees just for the sake of this example okay now range yeah you know, obviously you put in what ranges you're you're shooting at if you want to tell it to find your location you can hit this icon up in the upper upper right there in this case it won't find it for us because again i've got location services disabled right now okay up a screen just to get that to turn off and quit trying to find itself there we go but you can use that feature and it'll tell you where you are on the map okay and just like before chart mode uh, in this case it goes from shortest distance to farthest I've got it set up in 10 yard increments you can change that you like 25 you like more you like less that's user preference elevation Correction is the next column, wind correction, next column, velocity, energy, and time of flight, pretty standard outputs. That first gray threshold line there, that's for that vital zone threshold that we put. Hey, we wanted to shoot a six inch vital zone. Our, our quarry or our target is six inches. That's how far we can shoot before we have to start dialing anything in and we'll get a hit on that target. This is a handy feature. Uh, so in this case, I know if I'm going out hunting with this particular rifle, until it gets to 200 yards, I don't have to think about dialing anything. Okay, as we scroll down, you see that other threshold that we set up, that was the energy threshold. That's important to me, 1,000 foot-pounds of energy. Okay, standard chart form, pretty handy. This one will also let you export it either into photos uh, or if you've got a, a spreadsheet on your phone, you can export that to a, a spreadsheet, which we'll talk about in our next video a little bit. But just standard Mark 1 Mono chart there. Next mode that we've got, we've got the map mode. Okay, we talked about this in our overview video. Now we can go and look at where we are. Again, this will give us where our location is. You know, you'll scroll around until you see the blue highlighted dot, and that tells you where your location is. Again, I've got location turned off for this recording. All right, but. This is pretty close to one of our ranges here. I can go drop a pin. Hey, 
my location dot, let's say it's up and running, I can drop a shooter pin there. I can come over here, drop a target pin, and then when I tap on that target pin, it gives me the data based off those inputs that we, we put in, okay? If I wanna see, hey, what's the data chart, the whole chart for that particular shot, I can see everything that's going on up to where that target is. If I hit this blue chart button right there, okay? Again, we can toggle between topo mode, see what the terrain looks like that we're going through, or we can come back to imagery mode, scan around, hey, what's behind us? Uh, is there some, looks like there's some structures there at 3,000 yards behind that target. Okay, we're probably safe there. Just that initial look. If it's beyond that threshold, let's say we get a target that's beyond our threshold, drop another pin for our target. You notice that red line dots out. Everything in that red line is beyond that threshold that we set up earlier. Okay, so it's just more, more information for you at your fingertips. Okay, you can always save these where you can get rid of them. Okay, our final feature, output feature on this, and this is something we like to use in our match, our uh, Redley Peak Ranch Open that we have in, in uh, the final weekend of September. Uh, the folks up at Ballistic Arc, uh, they loaded all of our firing positions, all of our targets in last year. Uh, they're gonna be doing that again this year for us. Uh, <clears throat> It gives folks an electronic matchbook. So they have the matchbook telling them what each course of fire is. Then they've got it automatically loaded up into, into their app for them. Let's go to stage five. We can look at stage five. Hey, there's our, our targets. There's our bearing. You got all your data. You input the wind. Weather data, it gives it to you right there. Next firing solution right there. That's on our map mode. Let's go to stage five on our competition move. We had three targets to shoot. In this case, gives us those three targets and the data we need for that. Now I can either write that out onto my risk card, my risk coach, or a memory aid, or just a scrap piece of paper so that I know in between each shot target when I'm on the clock, trying to go fast, everything's right there. Okay, this holdover setting, you know, if you notice you're, you're trending high or low for the day, you can tell it, hey, we want to hold about, you know, uh, a little bit over or under. Let's just throw one in. And it'll update all that stuff for you. Okay. That is the other output feature on this guy. Okay, now, some of your preferences that you can set up you can come into the settings. You can tell it which mode you want to start with. You want to start with the map, chart, map mode first, the competition mode first. Again, I like the chart mode. That's why it defaults to that. My increments, you can tell it what yardages you like. You can turn on the smart buttons. You can tell it to find location, that location button. I've got it on. Tell it what units you're in, pressure. All right. Where your compass is coming from, is it coming from the device, is it coming from your Bluetooth weather meter, for example. You can calibrate all this stuff. You can update the firmware. It's a really solid program, okay? Just like before, I've got unsuppressed set up in here. I've got another profile. Same exact bullet, this time it's suppressed. You can see my side height it's 1.95 inches, key area to pay attention to. Zero range, <clears throat> elevation offset. In this case, I throw my can on, it's 0.875 inches low every time. All right, nice and consistent. I measured that after shooting groups. So we're good to go there. Now I can come over, check my data. Notice that threshold is just a little bit less because it's, it's, you know, again, it, it was a little bit low. So it doesn't quite go all the way out before it hits that thousand foot pound threshold. Same thing with our six inch target threshold. It's a little bit less. So you know, 
another good good feature of this this guy you know, just like before we can set up our app down here in Austin Texas we can go up to Wyoming elk hunting it takes that change in environment into account it also takes the change in whether we go suppressed or unsuppressed into account we can go different different loads hey I primarily hunt with this load but when I hunt elk I go with a heavier load lighter load whatever the case may be you can set up those different profiles and you don't have to keep changing your zero and you don't have to try to remember all that stuff all right that about concludes ballistic arc if you have any questions we're going to have the website up for for those folks they're up there in dallas a uh, fantastic company to work with uh, some local guys so definitely support them as well uh, appreciate you stopping by we have one more segment to cover i uh, hope you join us for that one if you'll step on over to that link for us thank you very much take care